Hi there, John Hicks here, and um, in this video, I want to um, just share a little bit about the guitars that I play. Um, now, <laughs> um, I've recently come into possession of two or three over the past couple of years, and a, a common question I get asked is, why so many? Why do you need so many guitars? Now, um, it's probably not a case of need, but um, there is a difference. And in this video, what I'd like to do is just illustrate, um, hopefully through my setup, um, what the difference in sound is by playing with different guitars. So I'm gonna show you three guitars, and you would have seen them on previous videos. So the first one's gonna be my Epiphone Emperor Swingster, which is a dual humbucker guitar. With um, It's got some interesting s switching capabilities in that you can work from parallel to series with the pickups. Um, I've got my PRS SE Starla, which is featured a lot in my videos, which again is another humbucker guitar, but um, I can coil split the, the, the humbuckers to sound like single coils. So that, that, that's given me a little bit of functionality to kind of get me somewhere close to maybe more of a sort of stratty sound. Didn't, but that's what I was telling myself. Um, and then more recently I've purchased a um, Japanese made Fender Stratocaster. So um, I'm just going to have a little, little doodle on each, noodle on each one of them um, on this video and just kind of talk through what I think I can hear and hopefully you'll be able to hear this through my setup. Now literally all I'm going to do, um, my, what you're hearing is me and my microphone's going through a focus right into my laptop um, and all the guitar sounds are going through my Valaton GT, GP200 um, on, a, on a clean setting with a little bit of delay. So um, hopefully you'll just get a sense of how different they all sound. So let's start with my Emperor Swingster because that's what's out at the moment. So here it is, my Epiphone Emperor Swingster. Now as you can see, two humbuckers and um, sort of usual switching that you'd expect from this style of guitar. Um, now, why did I get this? I got this guitar um, after tried it trying it out in PMT in Cambridge and there was a video on, on my channel YouTube channel for, um, that sort of showed me playing it and I think actually despite the versatility of this guitar I think what attracted me to it was the neck pickup uh, there, there there you go um, and um, I'm just gonna noodle around and hopefully you'll hear what I'm hearing and I'll, I'll kind of describe the sound that I really love about this guitar but basically if, if you've got two humbuckers the humbucker sounds take make the the guitar tone um, fatter now what does that mean um well you'll have to just listen because when we get to the strat they won't be fat tones but they're kind of it's like a um a, a thicker tone to it um rather than a, a sharper glassier tone you would get from a strat but have a listen see what you think <laughs> So that just gives you a sense, but but this is for me. I can hear what I would describe as a wooden tone, particularly with the bass of strings. That little um, that sound for me, there's just something in that that is very different to that of the Strat and the Starla. because it's a hollow body guitar as well so what that means is you've got literally got a gap in inside there the whole thing's hollow some guitars have a block that go down the, the middle and it, that changes the sound um, this potentially has the ability to do lots of feedback um, which I thought it'd be a problem when I got it but it doesn't um, 
but it does give me some interesting kind of tones. And if I'm playing with the the big speed, the tremolo here, you can see his arm there, it gives me a nice. <laughs> Sounds very different to that, say, on a strat. this uh, or what context I'd use this I love it for the strumming stuff <laughs> there's a reason why these types of guitars are so used in the jazz context it's got a really sweet tone and um, and, I, and it very reminiscent of me having learned on an acoustic guitar and switched to electric but um, I feel like I play differently on here. Just the, the, the positioning, it's a bulky guitar, the arm coming down over here just makes me play different. Okay, enough of that. Let's switch over to the Strat. Okay, so what we have here is a Made in Japan Fender modern Stratocaster. So it's a modern version on so what, what we um, would traditionally expect from a strat um, so we've got the modern um, um, noiseless pickups on here these are single coil pickups you'll see they're very different shaped to the ones on the swimster um, the the neck is a compound radius so it means that the frets here are less curved than say up here which means that for chords and stuff it sounds great up here it's better for lead um, and um, it's, just, it's just a very comfortable guitar to play. I like it because of the blue, but then that's, that's all my guitars seem to be blue these days. And I like the binding on here as well. So it's a really cool looking guitar, but it sounds different to the Swimster. Why does it sound different? So um, I've got more options for tones actually. So I've got three pickups and I can combine um, these two and these two as well. So this, this is a five way switch on my Strat. So um, if I start at the bottom, that's that pickup. That one's those two. The next position, middle position, is just that one. The penultimate position is these two, and then that one is um, the final position. Position five is that net pickup. Now, but I'm going to start with the net pickup and work backwards. So the net pickup is quite a, a, a bassy tone to it, relatively for a single call, and this is what it sounds like. <laughs> to the middle positions, neck and middle. position there. Here's the middle position. Second position, which is the bridge uh, middle position. Which is the bridge 
pick up there. Is it ch um, this is rather cool. <laughs> So basically, from here to here, the tones get progressively less bassy. And, and in, to my ear, the pickups coming this way, as they get more trebly, um, the middle pickup makes this pickup in combination and this pickup pick in combination. There's almost like a, a nasal kind of nasally sound to it. Not a cocked wild, but that kind of like a, almost a wildy kind of sense to it. As opposed to and That was the bridge pickup, so that was really kind of like trebly and, and wildy as well. So so yeah, they kind of combinations or whatever you don't really need to know that but um, you can hear the difference in tone when you switch between different pickups and this guitar is so versatile and the nice thing about the single coil um, is that it cuts through the mix in a band setting really nicely so you can really hear the tones um, the downside on a lot of Stratocasters and S types are the pickups historically have been known to give a bit of a um, a, a buzz and um, that's called the 60 hertz cycle hum and um, these don't because these are the noiseless pickups and what that means is that they've actually put an extra coil underneath each pickup which cancels out that hum so I'm not getting it in here which is lovely because it's really quiet which is nice because if I switch to a distorted sound so I didn't do it on the synth set but never mind. <laughs> It adds a really, it kind of keeps it fairly clean, um, which I like. So um, that's the strap. And hopefully you can hear the difference in tone between this and the Swinster. Now I'm going to get the um, the PRS SE Starler out. Okay, so here we have the PRS SE Starler. It is one of the cheapest guitars you can get from PRS. It's um, made in Indonesia by um, Cortec. Okay, it's a single cut, double humbucker, no tremolo um, guitar, very good neck. Um, and obviously the, the characteristic headstock that you get from PRS, although all three have characteristic headstocks for the different um, makes. Um, this set me off on a journey. I got this um, not last April, but the April before. I, uh, uh, yes, around about that time anyway. Um, and it it really got me thinking about how guitar electric guitars work in terms of the tone. And I get so many tones out of here. What I get really is the two single coils, uh, two humbuckers, but this pot here pulls out and then it splits each pickup. So I've got a three pick, um, a three position selector, pickup selector. Um, so if I'm sat just on the neck pickup, then I can, I've got the choice of the humbucker or the single coil. If I'm sat here, I've got the choice of humbucker, single coil. If I've got the combination in the middle position then I've got a choice of two humbuckers or two single coils um, depending on, on the split so I'll play some tones you tell me what you think but this honestly just set me off on a, on a path of discovery and um, a little bit of an obsession with electric guitars but 
I'll play away and you can hear the difference in tone. So in, in one sense, the tone the tones can be very similar to the Swingster because of the the, the, the fatter tone from the the two humbuck then the two coils in the humbucker. So let's start with the neck position. See what that sounds like. So you can you can hear that's got quite a deep a deeper tone. Now, if I was to split them, the well, if I start with the bridge position, you'll hear the difference. So this is the non the non split sound, and now I split the pickup. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I can hear like a very um, a, a lower intensity sound, but like a brighter a brighter tone to it. It gives it makes it nice record. Record work cool. Now, if I go to a middle position, this is where the magic happens. So, this is um, the humbuckers, and then I'll split it again. If I split that, it's going to sound like this. So you, you can hear the drop in intensity of the signal, but it gives, for me, a, a sweeter tone. So it gives a lot of nice options. But I, lo I love the middle tone split, the middle section um, position split. Really love that sound. And it's on the way to getting. Um, not a strat sound but a similar sound to a strat um, so for me this guitar is very much a um, probably covers most basses in in a sort of a covers band so I play rock and roll and blues but more recently with the introduction of the strat which goes really really well with Steve Ray Vaughan type blues I've used this more in, hum in the humbucker mode playing um, 
like Santana stuff. Um, and I just love the neck position with the humbucker on. So let me just illustrate that with a bit of distortion or a bit of overdrive. <laughs> Something one that I do in, in the gig. So, so anything that requires more of a humbuckery kind of sound, a, a, a fatter sound, I, I'm using this guitar, um, more of the rock tool, I guess. Um. <laughs> sound but it, it feels like I'm in in that area so somewhere between an SG and a Les Paul kind of tone with the humbuckers but th these humbuckers are brighter than traditional um, sort of path sounding humbuckers um, so I like the fact it's quite unique and for me the, the, the distorted tone that you can hear is quite um, defined with these <laughs> mistakes but it doesn't matter you, that doesn't matter because you can still hear the tone so yeah so why would I use three different guitars and what, what, what context would I use them in so okay so like I say this one here great for um, for rhythm tones with chords clean as, as I've kind of showed you um, and I found that um, when I didn't have the other two guitars this really did pretty much everything at the time um, Although I did have my eye on getting a Strat and I wanted a hollow body, so hence that's what I've got since. But um, I've um, busted this guitar, I've been in a band setting with this guitar. Um, it's really, really good, it's very responsive. I can, it's got a nice percussive. <laughs> I, I do a lot of the sort of volume swells with the volume pot um, and it's really versatile so great guitar it was only about 500 pounds um, and PRS's can go up to about 20,000 right so um, I feel like I've got a bargain um, but it doesn't have a tremolo so that's another reason why I'd use one of the other two guitars so with my covers band I would use this and then I would use this for my blues and rock and roll stuff, sort of the, the more um, lighter set tone sounding, so like Steve Ray Vaughan kind of stuff, and I love it. The, and it cuts through the mix. You don't have to be really, really loud to be heard with this because tonally it just it sits in a place that none of the other instruments can um, uh, dominate it. So it's, it's nice. It comes through clearly. You can hear yourself. It, tonally it just works great for lots of Texas blues and stuff like that. Um, but it's a real joy to play, and um, and that leaves me with the 
Sphinxster. This, I w I've chosen to use this more actually from um, the perspective of using it as a strumming type guitar, but that, that tone on this, neither of the other two guitars touches this in terms of tone from this perspective. Um, it, it plays like an acoustic guitar, but you can rock out as well. I mean, the, the rock sound on here, if I was to go to the neck pick up. So I feel like I'm getting like a more of an old schooly rock sound with this, and, and these are very old style guitars, these um, Epiphone Swingster with. Um, Emperor Swingsters. So I, I, I get some nice bluesy tones out of it. But the sweetest place is the neck pick up. For a lot of my strumming songs so that's it a, a short comparison between the three guitars i use mostly in my band setting and my busking setting um, i hope you found it useful and um, hope you could hear the different tones um, with the different guitars through this setup and um, if you've got any questions please pop them in the comments um, i'd love to um, sort of answer any questions that you have um, if you like my content it's all hobbyist stuff I'm, I'm not a professional with this um, but if you like what I do then please do like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video bye for now